Hello and uh, welcome friends. This evening I present to you a quite elegant and beautiful fountain pen, the Waterman Karen. If you watch my uh, channel, I already reviewed the Waterman Karen, but uh, that Waterman Karen that I showed you had a black body and also a black cap. That variant was called Standard Black Sea Gold Trims. Today I have for you another variant of the same elegant fountain pen. This time it has this beautiful, beautiful silver metallic cap. The body remains uh, a metallic brass body, but it has this dark, intense blue or navy blue color. Here is a comparison between the black, the black sea and uh, intense blue version. You can see both of them side by side. And uh, of course, the beautiful, beautiful main attraction of this fountain pen lies in its wonderful, wonderful nib. And I will give you a little zoom to the nibs because they are truly, truly elegant and wonderful. So in, an interesting fact, they both share the same color of the grip section. So they are both black ones. The most interesting uh, fact uh, and the main selling point in my view of this fountain pen lies in their wonderful, wonderful nibs. They are called, uh, they are also known as the inlaid nibs. Some consider them to be semi-hooded nibs. Although the whole nib is opened, some people consider them uh, an unfinished nib. So if uh, it were, the nib were till this part, it will be considered an open nib. But I love the design, it's a dynamic design. It's like uh, the name, like the French name suggests, Karen. It's like the body of a ship that uh, navigates through the sea. So uh, if you put them like this, you can see their wonderful, wonderful bodies. Speaking about the bodies, on the back of them, where on usual fountain pens we can see the feed. This time we have a hidden feed. We have a big breathing hole and you can see thermically imprinted the size of the nib right near the breathing hole. So we both have an M nib. What is interesting about uh, those fountain pens, and I will show them to you right now. So, this is our standard black sea with gold trims. And I will take the cap of uh, the other one to see. Yes, we have a perfect match, like I was uh, expecting. And now, the fountain pen is transformed from a standard black sea gold trims with a deluxe black version. So this is the deluxe black version. And it reminds me of a wonderful, wonderful fountain pen from Mont Blanc. This is the Meisterstuck 146 Due with a silver cap. Of course, the cap of the Waterman, to my knowledge, is it is not silver. 
and there are differences between the two fountain pens in the sense that the body of the Meisterstück is precious resin or precious plastic and the body of the Waterman is brass, it's a metallic fountain pen covered in this black lacquer. And the similarities stop at the way they look. Of course, our Waterman is um, has a cartridge filling mechanism or a ink converter filling mechanism and this has an integrated piston. This has a uh, wing ink windows and the other one doesn't need to have ink windows. And of course another comparison between the two models is the nib. So the difference between an inlaid nib and a classic open nib like this beautiful beautiful 18 karat nib of the Meisterstück of course we have also an 18 karat nib on our Waterman Karen we can see that they are both similar in length and if we judge solely by the grip section, I think they are quite similar. Although this is this has a fatter body, and this is a slimmer body. When you hold the fountain pens on the grip section, you will realize that they are quite quite similar in dimensions. And although we have a brass body. I think that the piston inside the Meisterstück compensates and they feel the same weight. Maybe this a little bit heavier, but not as heavier as you've expected from a metallic versus a plastic or a precious resin fountain pen. So this was my comparison, guys. By the way, why not? I will take this opportunity and I will leave the dimensions of our fountain pen on the screen so I will leave the dimension of this intense blue one on the screen and uh, why not I will compare the dimensions with the dimensions of the Mont Blanc 146 Due with a silver cap And after that, I will do the writing sample. Again, a wonderful, wonderful fountain pen. And it simply works this combination with, between the dark blue and uh, the gold trims. So it's a wonderful, wonderful fountain pen, guys. You can see a beautiful, beautiful clip. It has that distinct feeling of uh, uh, this, that distinct clip with that uh, part, that hole practically in the clip. I was checking this out and uh, yes, this is, I believe it's a scratch. But let me compare it with the other one. So, strange on this one. You can see the clip ends quite different. And this seems like a hole mark, but I'm not so sure about it. Maybe it's just a scratch on the gold-plated trim. I'm not so sure, guys. But this is a trademark that we see on the other one more clearly. And they both end with that logo, that W from Waterman. Yes, definitely some sign of uh, wear and tear on this one. 
or they are silver hard marks no definitely not a silver hard mark there well guys maybe i'm not so sure but if it were silver it should have a 9 to 5 imprint like the Mont Blanc has so let me show you look here you can see a 9 to 5 on the Mont Blanc so this at least 800 silver it should have a hallmark here or on other part of it but in my opinion it is not silver maybe silver plated I'm not so sure at the end of the cap we have France we have Waterman engraved so quite quite a nice nice elegant fountain pen and of course it ends like the other one in this elegant elegant ending with the gold trims something interesting because it is symmetric like the Karen like the body of a ship it almost you can see this is the front of a luxury yacht and this is the ending oh yes you can imagine it's quite quite elegant so this is a wonderful wonderful instrument it simply flows uh, the water flows beneath it and also above it so it's quite nice it flows above it it simply glides on the nib and at the end it simply goes like this so elegant 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 who doesn't want to own this fountain pen in their collection well guys it's not uh, an expensive fountain pen but if you can see if you consider the fact that it has a gold nib and it is more expensive in comparison with the Lamy 2000 well after you buy yourself a Lamy 2000 next on your list it should be this fountain pen the only flaws I could see in my online research was um, a little bit of a problem relating the ink flow and some of them um, they uh, tend uh, when they are posted to leak uh, some ink this isn't the fact of all the models and some people says the, that if you use uh, ink cartridges the problem will be over so instead of an ink converter use ink cartridges well this model doesn't have the ink cart uh, doesn't have the ink converter so it's fitted with an ink cartridge but i have the ink converter on uh, this other model since now it doesn't uh, seem to present that problem but um, this is the ink converter and you can see it's an original waterman ink converter so it's simply a matter of i think of pressure that pressure that uh, the ink is um, flowing from the vessel from a cartridge or an ink converter to the nib so it appears that the ink converter has a little bit of pressure and uh, the ink tends to flow excessively when it reaches the nib section we will see about that when we will do the writing sample i hope it will be everything okay so guys this is the only problem with this fountain pen 
um, maybe it's a matter of just taking the right steps on equalizing the inflow. I'm not so sure, but you will see that in this case, it will be everything all right. I used it for a couple of days and I had no problems with the ink flow. So I'm ready for testing it. Before I will test it, I will change the angle of the camera. So I've changed the angle of the camera. Let me see, maybe a zoom will be in order here. Okay. I will show you this fountain pen definitely posts. You can post it. But uh, as I'm looking inside of it, it doesn't have that protective plastic part. So I think it's better to leave it uncapped. By the way, guys, this is a pressure fit cap. And it's quite ingenious. It reminds me of the Lamy 2000 because it has those little metallic parts here and here you can see that ensure a quite tight fix and they have the click sound. Okay, you hear that click sound. Now I'm ready for the writing sample with this gorgeous, gorgeous 18 karat, 750 gold nib. By the way, guys, as the engraving, as the imprint on the back, it we have an M nib. So, let me zoom out a little bit. We have a waterman. Karen, it is the version of Intense Blue, or you can call it Navy Blue, Navy Blue, or Indigo Blue, it is quite, quite nice. So, this fountain pen is made in France, made in France. It has a beautiful 18 carat 750 M gold nib. As you can see, it dries quite, quite smooth. Let me see if we have some line variance. So, no flex. I was expecting that because like the hooded nib or semi-hooded nib, this is a quite stiff nib. Let me see the pressure test. So here, no pressure. And here, a little bit of pressure. So you can see no line variance. Interesting, let me see if we can reverse right with it. So, reverse writing. So definitely, yes, it's a possibility, reverse writing. I must admit it scratches a little bit, but you can write short sessions and if it normal writes an M I said I, I think in reverse writing we have an F a fine reverse writing let me see a fine versus an M a medium okay it seems to be a quite quite nice signatures okay quite nice let me see how juicy it is. It appears to be a quite juicy fountain pen. You can see. Nice, nice. I like it a lot. This nib seems to be 
quite quite nice and now it is time for me to tell you about the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog as you can see quite quite a nice nice writer so guys what can i tell you an elegant elegant piece made by waterman it is still in production so this means that it is quite quite a nice fountain pen of course after the karen on my wish list it's the edson from waterman i believe i spell uh, i pronounced it correctly it is not uh, in production uh, it has also an interesting interesting nib and uh, it's quite expensive but i hope that i will uh, be able to add it to my collection so guys this was my review of another waterman karen another configuration of the waterman karen i uh, liked it a lot and i must tell you the wonderful price because uh, <laughs> i'm sorry guys you are used to have transparent reviews on this channel so i'm not hiding that i bought this fountain pen at a steal so i paid for it around 400 uh, lace or with shipment let's say um, let's say approximately 100 euros less than 100 euros so 90 euros and uh, let's call it uh, 113 american dollars so i did uh, quite quite nice considering that the new one it is um, i believe it's uh, the price of a new one is um, around 300 euros approximately i'm not so sure guys maybe you will tell me in the comments but uh, quite quite a nice fountain pen does it deserve this price tag in comparison with uh, the 200 euros of a lamy 2000 in my opinion yes the lamy 2000 is a wonderful wonderful fountain pen and it will be my first first choice but uh, right after i own a lamy 2000 in my collection i will go for a waterman karen so guys this is my subjective opinion <laughs> you can agree with it or uh, maybe i'm wrong it's uh, just a matter of taste i simply love this inlaid nib i think it is gorgeous the whole shape of the fountain pen is gorgeous of course it would be a perfect fountain pen the, this is a strange notion because you will see when you have lots lots of fountain pens you can see this is a well-made fountain pen but never never say it's a perfect fountain pen in my opinion if it were a piston filler it would be even a better fountain pen but it is what it is guys i love it as it is with its little flaws and with a beautiful beautiful elegant elegant look this was my review i hope you've uh, enjoyed it if you've enjoyed my review please subscribe to my channel to support my activity as always i want to wish you to have a nice day wherever you are guys please stay safe in this pandemic time of course we will see each other on at the next episode till then uh, bye bye and god bless